at my age, it's uh, there's only me going to beat my own drum, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, or maybe once or twice a year. I mean, Christmas, Christmas and Easter. <laughs> oh, it's coming to that time. <laughs> you, you ever managed to blow your own whistle? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to be fair, we got his wife to blow the whistle for him. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even ask her. She just came in and started blowing it. <laughs> Any man's like workshop that. wet dream. <laughs> That's hell of a distraction, actually. <laughs> no wonder you don't get anything done. So, welcome to episode 63 of Number One Crude Mistakes podcast with KJ from Crude Bullet Efficient, Glenn from Number One Project, and Huva from Behind the Mistakes. Woohoo, let's go. Hey. Nice. <laughs> and what was that lovely voice doing the intro? And I am Andy from Cormoran Craft. And sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. <laughs> <laughs> Most people do. <laughs> Welcome, Andy. Welcome. Thanks, guys, Welcome. for having me on. Yeah. Great to have you here. So, how's everybody doing this week? Start with you, Andy. Well, it's, you know, it's Monday, so, <laughs> so far so good, yeah. Um, sure is. Yeah, slow start. Yeah, you didn't sound too happy this morning when we were talking to you. No. <laughs> in traffic, heading to the office. You couldn't even pretend to put a happy voice on, could you? <laughs> well, it's all, all good now. I'm actually on a day off tomorrow. Really? Yeah. What are you so, going to do with your day off? I'm going to finish my project. What project's that? My chair. So, yeah. Um, I've, most of, I've most of it done. I need, it's probably like a half a day to finish the weave of the back. Well, start the weave of the back. And then, yeah. yeah, so... Yeah. So we're talking about your scrap wood build off here and you've made a absolutely beautiful chair. I yeah. think it's a hot contender myself. Well, it's uh I, I has to see if it holds the weight of a person yet. <laughs> <But> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing with a chair. <laughs> It's but only it, got to hold it long enough for one picture, Andy. Exactly. <laughs> Take lots of pictures before you try it, and then you don't have to talk about it. Yeah, start yeah. with the smallest member of the family and work <laughs> yeah. on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the hamster. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's definitely one of those projects that are looking a bit too good to be a scrap wood project. Um, but yeah, uh, how, how are you feeling with the, the cord? Uh, the cord is really. Um, Do you enjoy it? I watched it? a video, uh, ten minute workshop, and it it was pretty good. Uh, Peter had on, and a few other videos. It's it's quite a simple process. I found out um, using nails to to loop around the cord rather than wrapping it the whole length round through each time. So, yeah, that that looks much simpler. But I yeah. heard a lot of people who are really uh, falling out of love with it really fast <laughs> because they find it <laughs> tedious, but, but some people are loving the meditative way of doing it. So in which camp do you fall? Well, uh, I've, I've enjoyed it, but if, you know, obviously you always enjoy the first time you do a project and then if you have to do more of them or too many of them, it gets a bit tedious. So I would imagine something like that. You know, that kind of weaving backward and forth would be like that. Because that was my follow-up question. I mean, one chair? I mean, they usually come in a pair or a full dinner set. So I was going to ask uh, (laughs) how we're going to do the five uh, (laughs) remaining ones. (laughs) I mean, that's that's a tough, tough thing with chairs because making one chair is hard. And then, as you say, if you want to make a set, you have to make identical chairs that match together. And that's even harder. So... Um, chairs are I'm not going to make one I think ever I thought you said what I was thinking because I said tufting chair because 
instead of that twain back and forth, like, could you just, I mean, I've seen some upholstery guys, they just put the padding in and then you, of course, stretch mm -hmm. fabric over, but couldn't you just stretch regular fabric like you use for tufting and then you could tuft your own chair? That would be That's comfy. called a back chair. You know, like the, the beach one where you fold out? That's just a piece of material going across. So Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. Yeah, that would work. Oh yeah, that was yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I yeah. guess you could. What sort of rope or twine do you use for it, Andy? I'm using the um Danish cord, which is paper. It's a paper based uh, ah, cord. Yeah. Um it it bends well, it doesn't fray. You right. know, it's it's very strong as well. Yeah, no stretching um, it. No, very little. Oh, okay. Very little. Just got to be careful but, not to spill a drink on it, I guess, if it's paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah cause that, that's another thing, though, because I've seen those chairs, like in a traditional setting, like in the old, uh, like old churches and uh, communal houses, uh, old schools, whatnot, and of course. Those chairs are a million years old, but uh, by that time, the, the weaving has become kind of brittle. So I remember as a kid, you were sitting there and you were bored. So you just started to like flicker <laughs> underneath and yeah, you could break away certain parts. And it's like, how many can I break away before I fall through the seat of the chair? <laughs> <laughs> sort of like yeah. a chair roulette kind of deal. Yeah. <laughs> You have to think of it like a thatched roof and it just needs replaced every, you know, 10 years or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, probably. I've got to be honest, I've never felt the need to want to make a chair, but seeing yours and seeing how well you've done it, it, it has made me want to make one. I just The main problem now is I wouldn't know where to put one if I made one. You know, I, I was lucky because my our middle child, Isabel, uh, she was wanting a chair for her bedroom to read on. And we were in a shop. It was must have been September time, and she was like, "Oh, I need a chair." And I we just seen one she liked, and I did my usual thing: "I'll make you one. I'll make you one. We don't need to spend money. I'll make one." <laughs> and then she was like, "No, oh, brilliant! Yeah, let's do that." So that that's kind of where I decided I'll, I'll make a chair out of these these pallets. I was going to go for a table originally, and then right. yeah, table it. tables do seem to win the challenge, don't they? Quite a lot. <laughs> 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 so somewhere to put somewhere to put the chair when it's finished oh yeah that's good but i, I think someone mm -hmm. gambled here because yeah some someone has won with a lot of tables now it's time to put chairs under them so <laughs> yeah. have you chairs. seen many um, english entries for the scrapwood build-off yet uh, to be fair i've only seen yours and ross's fat hogs yeah and yours yeah I've not seen any others of you. I haven't, but then, it, to be honest, it's harder. I think it's harder to follow with the the Aussie um, yeah. posts getting shared as well. It's hard to see what's what, isn't yeah. it? That's true. Michelle's in the workshop as we speak, making hers. Last she's got, yeah, she's got until Saturday. <laughs> Is it a table? <laughs> it's a table, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Copper inlay. <laughs> it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm not, I'm not tell you, I'll let her share what she's making. <laughs> Apart from a lot of mess in my workshop. <laughs> Your workshop? It is my workshop. <laughs> that being said, though, I just... I've actually had making a chair on my list for quite a while it's just not been on my list but i put it down now because i have the last week i have tried to summarize all the projects i'm gonna do because i have notes here and there uh, and now that you reminded me i added a chair so now i have 24 projects from well 2025 <laughs> so are we are we talking normal chair here on the list, or is, does it do something fantastical? Has it got a no, two stroke it's a, engine? It, it's the kind you you put your ass on and just sit. Yeah, <laughs> oh, fair enough. It's standard chair. Standard chair. It's uh, I always <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a. I need a welding chair, and I always wanted 
to make a chair out of these old cast iron tractor seats. And yeah. they have become really popular and kind of expensive, but sometimes people are not knowing what they're selling, so I'm just waiting for the right one that's not cracked. I think you can, buy, you can buy a lot of reproduction ones of those now. I think. Yeah, but I want an old one. Yeah. Dinged up one that's actually been on a farm equipment at some point. Well, you've got a tractor in the uh, workshop right now. I yeah, exactly. I, I, was, I was thinking about, should I get one of those seats? Because that would have been cool. But... <laughs> <laughs> so what have you two been up to then uh, yeah I, I finished the scrap wood build off um, I made the two Maui hooks and have sworn never to engrave anything in wood ever again <laughs> <laughs> I mean doing one piece is more than enough making two that's twice that so <laughs> you seem something. to make everything in pairs yeah. <laughs> Ever since the padlocks, That's, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the padlock was for myself because I also needed one for myself. But th this is for uh, this is for my kids. And every time I make something, I need to make two almost identical pieces because peace and quiet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the way. I'm pleased I managed to make it on deadline for a, a competition I'm not eligible to participate in anyway so <laughs> it's a, a fictitious uh, deadline but still it's should we make our own league the uh, outsiders and have our own competition well, to, yeah and, just... we, and, and we get our own prices way yeah. better than the... <laughs> <laughs> well, i think that's tim's dream he wants somebody to run the rest of europe for it so i think you've just volunteered no, 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 no. This is just no, no, this no, time. No, I didn't volunteer. Just, just, just me and Hovar, and we're both uh, contributing prices of ten thousand pounds, and we both win it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's both first and second prize. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> identical. Just swap. Yeah. I, al I always wanted one of those huge ass oversized checks. You could make one of those. <laughs> It's all about going bigger get with your, you, isn't it? Are you trying to compensate for something? <laughs> you know, and get your journalist uh, friend round for the photographs and all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be fair, though, I thought about that last night, and I was listening to a podcast, a Norwegian one, and they were talking about uh, the birthplace of uh, the cheese slicer, the Norwegian one. Um and then you have a neighboring town and they made the world's biggest cheese slicer. And then they were discussing there should be a competition there. And I was like, hmm, how big is it? <laughs> but then they spilled the beans and it's like eight meters. So I was like, nope, I'm out. But <laughs> it would be nice if we could just go on the Guinness World of Records and just the world's biggest and then see what you get hits on it. What can we, amongst ourselves, just like kind of easily pull off? Because is that the way mm. we can make the podcast known uh, to new listeners? We're the podcast who just keeps stealing world's biggest records. So <laughs> <laughs> just making all small communities around the world really pissed off because some blokes <laughs> and a podcast, they keep making bigger versions of whatever we are proud of. <laughs> We make it completely ridiculous and go for world's biggest pinhead or something like that. <laughs> you know, mm. I ha I have the parts already, and you have the lathe. Um, mm -hmm. Because I ordered some parts from AliExpress last time, and of course the algorithm just keeps showing you. People who bought this also bought this, and then I found these. They come in different colors, but usually they are black. They're black round knobs in like a Bakelite substance that is used on like uh, old gear levers and whatnot. And you get them in like different threads. And like, at some point I'm going to have a gear lever and I want a knob for it. So that's, I don't need them. Probably not going to need them for 40 years or something, but... They look really cool and they're extremely... Ch Ooh, they have them in red soles. <laughs> so I have two round knobs. 
for a project i yet not know yeah well if you, if you need a doctor for those i know one <laughs> <laughs> Go on then, KJ, what have you been up to? Far too little, I feel. Uh, at the moment, it's way too much work and too little play. Uh, yeah. Yeah, way too way too much uh, other stuff. And, and yeah, when I got... I mean, uh, Sunday was off from all that stuff, but I had to spend the morning... Uh, changing tires to winter tires on the car, so we could actually go and celebrate my father's birthday, and that <laughs> was, that was that day gone. <laughs> so, I mean, it, I, it felt. I mean, it it was all productive and nice and good and that sort of thing, but it still feels like I got nothing done because yeah, nothing on of my own private list. So, so not not one minute to yourself in the workshop then. Uh, no, oh, um, no. <laughs> so I mean, it's uh, and it's like a, I think it's a week ago almost since last I had some proper workshop time, mm-hmm. and not just passing through it and seeing. Oh yeah, I was gonna do this. Uh, oh dear, yeah, it's not good. It's not no. good for you, mate. <laughs> no, and I'm uh, away on another uh, work thing tomorrow, uh, spending a night away again. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm having my fill of sleeping in hotels for a long time, I feel like. You're doing a lot of social activities just lately, KJ. Yeah, I know. I don't like it. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't feel like me. <laughs> no, it was, it was that. I, I think I said it before, that November, where ev- everyone plans to put something and all the things aligned. So I couldn't just say no to stuff because something else happened. Uh, so... Then I accidentally said yes to everything, and that was way stupid. <laughs> so I'm very much looking forward to December, where everything calms down. That's the, that's the month that normally goes crazy for most people, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my week started off all right last week because it uh, it snowed on uh, last Monday evening. That uh, that cut out a lot of work for me, so I only actually had to work two and a half days last week. So I had tons of time on my hands to get in the workshop. And I've had this big instrument build on my mind for a while. So um, I did what a normal maker does and completely put that off and got sidetracked and made a couple of other things instead. <laughs> that scans. <Yeah. laughs> so that started off on, um, I think it was Friday when I really got stuck into the workshop and I made a little whiteboard, a folding whiteboard for Lily for her to use for revision. Just a little simple project, not the prettiest of things. I've not shared it. Is it to, to carry with you, or it's just it's literally it's it's she has it on the table when she's revised and just writes notes on it, and then she can just work ah, it so out. it's okay. Yeah. yeah, and I decided to make it folding so it took up less space when it wasn't being used. Hmm. <laughs> Fair so enough. that was a yeah, that was a nice little project, not the prettiest of things, but it's functional. And then I'm not quite sure where the idea came from, but I decided I wanted to make a slide whistle on the lathe. I, don't, I honestly don't know where that idea came from now, but I got it into my head. I wanted to make one and, uh, yeah, went ahead and got a slide whistle out, which works brilliantly. I'm really quite happy with that. It turned out great. That's of an old table leg, an outdoor table. So it's teak again, our favourite wood hobo. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> and uh, I Really, you almost had me there it's for like a fraction of a second. I wanted a lathe because uh, the the end of that uh, what what's it called sliding rod sliding... slide slide whistle oh no yeah the sorry yeah, the, the sliding part yeah but the end of it yeah. looks like a honey dipper so like <laughs> yeah very uh, much so. I want to have tea now <laughs> so <laughs> I always wanted one and it feels wrong buying something like that but I think <laughs> I can make those notches on the bandsaw and just sand it so I might yeah. get away with not having a lathe. Yeah, they don't have to go all the way around, do they? Or I could use my vertical lathe because I have that one, so I can just chuck it in there and. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. (laughs) So that's a plan. So I can add that to the list. So now it's (laughs) twenty-five. So yeah, I got I say I got the whistle made and um, got a video edited and got that out as well, which really quite happy with myself. You know, it's only a week since I got the last one out. I think. It's project 
like that slide whistle and the, the the Maui fish hooks. I mean, when you sit down and edit those, you can hear the music from the movie and for the slide whistles. It's it's always that. I think it, is it Swedish, like the nineties dance hit, like yeah. "Blow My Whistle, Baby." <laughs> and I could just hear that tune in the back of my head. And that's the same, of course, when editing my videos. Like, I can just hear the Disney soundtrack, but there's no chance in hell you can use it for the video. Yeah. So I really struggled finding music for that because nothing could ever compare to the original that's already playing in your head. Yeah, but yeah. the one for the slide whistle, though, it was really catchy. And I, I think it has a, a certain signature to it. Yeah, the, the the Christmas tune I used yeah. in the video. You mean? I was really happy with that. That came off of uh, the YouTube audio library, mm. and I actually really enjoyed editing the video to that tune. <laughs> really made it for me. Nice. Yeah, nice, cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So just uh, just need some, a few more thousand watches, and I'll be happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> like <As> always. always. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's just the effort never seems to equal reward, does it? <laughs> That's life. That's yeah. Life. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that, that's the thing. Once you had some kind of su- success, yeah, then, you, then you measure everything to that. It was better exactly. when you had no success at all, then everything was great. Well, it really was, actually. I mean, the first video that I got out, I think it, I think it did probably 40 views in two weeks, and I was ecstatic every time that, one, that count went up by one. Yeah. I don't even know 40 people. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) I can account for 15 of those. (laughs) Yeah, but still. (laughs) So, Andy, do you have a long list of projects that you actually are going to do? (laughs) They always go to the bottom. um, I don't have a lot of projects coming up at the moment. I'm still in two minds about whether I should divide my workshop in half um, to double garage, and it's a bit of a sprawling mess. So I was thinking of having a workshop side and a normal garage side where I can keep bikes and lawnmowers and stuff that I don't want covered in wood dust. <laughs> 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 um, that's having a, a double garage? I know, but... It doesn't count if it's full of all the other stuff as well, does it? Yeah, so should I... I'm in two minds whether I should divide it in two or not. Have you done That'd a calculation to see if you can make your workshop slightly bigger than the shed side, if you like? Oh, yeah, it doesn't have to be... Yeah, not, not equal size. <laughs> no. How small can the smallest bit be and still be useful? Yeah. Hmm. yeah. That's, do, that's hard. do we really need all these bikes and lawnmowers? <laughs> But you know, the big advantage there, you, you give yourself an, an extra two walls to hang stuff on. Yeah, you that's, do true. That's, that's, that's true. That. That's true. I, I, I think that's a no-brainer. I would definitely go for that. Yeah, but, yeah, no, and of course the, the sizing is, I mean, debatable. I mean, you know the definition of a garage. That's a that's a, a geometrical volume where you theoret- theoretically can have a car. It has nothing to do with the physical car. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, you couldn't get a car into the garage now because the, the, the house is, you know, 35, 40 years old and cars were smaller then. <laughs> so yeah. it's like the, the opening <laughs> isn't big enough. Yeah. So do you think you'll do it? I think I will. Yeah. yeah. I'll be, well, I was going to do it in January, but now there's talks of lump belongs or whatever we were yeah, speaking about yeah. last week. So That doesn't take long to throw up a stud wall, though, does it? Well, it'll take me ages. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, put, you can put some lighting in it as well, and that's yeah. two birds with one stone. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's a really big lamp. <laughs> <laughs> Just win by size. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. There's no winners, KJ. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that, do a lamp. I think I want to make more chairs. Yeah? Mm. Uh, nice. Have you got room for more chairs? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any old chairs that you need to throw out? I've got a bench or a seat that it could be replaced, which is at the kitchen table. 
So maybe maybe that. I just had an idea. I was just about to say I could the only chair I could fit is a stool for the workshop, and then I just thought, oh, I could probably turn a stool. That'd be cool. That might be on the yes. list now. <laughs> yeah, you very much good. Yeah, mm-hmm. cylindrical parts, isn't it? Yeah, I, I thought about that when I was uh, home at my parents um, uh, this weekend. That they have an old, what's it called? You, you, spinning wheel. That's what it's called, I think. Uh, that you use for spinning yarn. Oh, okay. And I mean, that's. I, I looked at it and realized that I mean, all the parts except the main thing was was turned. It's just, it's yeah. just a lot of turned parts put together, like. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is this is a person who has a lathe and nothing else because it there was a rough the size of like a two by four in the middle with like n- n- there are nothing to it to make it look pretty. They but painted how- it and that was it. But the, all the all the the shafts or whatever you call it spindles the they were turned with nice uh, mm-hmm. yeah they looked like someone had put a lot of work into it yeah yeah so yeah. Yeah. No, you're right, actually. My mother-in-law's got one of those. There's not a lot of videos out there where people actually turn individual components and put them together to make a thing, is there? They just turn not one that thing I have on the lathe. Yeah. Yeah. Mainly yeah. balls. Yeah. So there you go. Mainly balls. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so a stool might be on the cards. That's interesting. But how did they... But I mean, the track or, or the the outer part of the rim, as you call it, on that uh, yarn spinner, was that also? No, that was yeah. That was yeah. Now the that ba- it had to be bent or on a really big lathe, wouldn't it? No, I think, I, that I think was uh, the one that my grandmother had and that was in our house for a while. I think those were made in sections and then glued together, and then yeah, yeah. At some yeah that's point, true. That part as well shaved down to something circular. Yeah. I'm not making a spinning wheel. Yet. Well, you said you weren't, <laughs> you said you weren't getting a lathe as well. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> but I mean, we can do a collaboration and the title, What Would Grandma Do in 2024? And you can make all the parts and I can put a two-stroke engine on it so we can make it petrol-powered. <laughs> and we can I ride just... it off to the sunset. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> World's fastest spinning wheel. We're going to make yarn like a motherfucker. <laughs> that would be a brilliant video, though. But there's there's a lot more turning work than uh, slapping a two-stroke on it. So I'm not sure if it would be an equal collaboration on my part. You could um, adapt a penny farthing, couldn't you? That's like a spinning wheel, isn't it? A similar sort of look. Well, yeah, it's close it's, uh, enough. Uh, yeah. It's a moving spinning wheel, basically. Yeah, yeah. Put an engine on that. Put some yarn out the back. Call it a engine <laughs> power spinning wheel. Job done. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> you can be sure that uh, after this recording, I'm going to be moving spinning wheels like it's <laughs> not <snow> tomorrow. <laughs> it's going to ruin your feed and your history, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's really going <laughs> to put the algorithm on a different track. <laughs> I looked at one whistle video because I didn't have a clue how to make a sliding whistle. <laughs> <laughs> My YouTube feed is absolutely full of it, which is quite nice, actually. I found another YouTuber that I follow now who I followed on Instagram, but I had no idea he had a uh, he had a YouTube channel as well, TFT Turning. Yeah. So that's nice. I, I realized that on the online marketplace that I use, it's that the algorithm is work in a way if you search for one thing that they earn a lot of percentages on then they're going to show you more of that so you you can search for uh, bits and bob for for years until it picks up on all right he's interested in all these weird small things and then it starts showing you those but if you search for one ATV or one motorcycle or one car because you're just going to check out something, they're like, ooh, he's in the market for one of those, and they just flood it instantly because <laughs> that's where they make their money. And that's really annoying because I now have only ATVs in my feed, and I already bought one. I'm done. It's like uh, all the, the pop-up ads show you shoes after you bought a pair that's going to last you for 10 years. So. Could you make some kind of script that when you're done 
searching and buying your stuff. Just run it so that your computer searches for a lot of things that you could be interested in, like angle grinder, drill, lathe. Do it a lot of times, so then the the algorithm thinks, oh, now he's interested in this stuff. Do you think you could make it as if somebody checked your history, and if you passed away and they looked at your history and you look like a make yourself look like a really cool guy? Like at ATVs, <laughs> trucks, and guns, and yeah, and spinning wheels. <laughs> <laughs> spinning wheels. <laughs> I think this is different settings yeah. before. But do you want to flood the the history so you don't find whatever it was that you? Were what was for? Grandpa's <laughs> last words? Spinning wheel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. <laughs> this could be a product, I think. <laughs> yeah, but so what's coming up? Oh, sorry. sorry. Nope. What's coming up next, Andy? After the chair, are you going to make? Have you got another mate coming up for December, or are you having December off? I'll decide when we get there. I, I don't have anything really that I need to do quickly. December is always fairly busy anyway, so I'll, yeah, I'll not stress too much. Where do you get your inspiration for your builds from normally? Is it you, you do take part in a lot of the challenges when when there's not a challenge on where does your inspiration come from? Do you think? This year I had a few commissions to, to do. I kind of need, I suppose, in some ways a reason to make something rather than just you know going out and saying what will I do today I'll make a whistle. Yeah, that's. Um, <laughs> I don't suffer with that. <laughs> so I did get a few commissions this year, which was good. The the big, massive tray was one, um, that, that turned out really well. So and then I do like joining in the challenges because that that sort of brings community together. Yeah, um, I enjoy that. I enjoy that the most. Um, and you, um, you, you did. You had a big achievement this year, didn't you? As well, you, that that inspired a make with the running. Oh yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So I, they ran a marathon in May, and then I made a. That was again, but that was also Chloe's uh, challenge for the storage. Yeah. So I uh, stored the medal in a, <laughs> in a picture. So. That, that was pretty cool. Um, I'm training for another marathon at the moment. So yeah. that's keeping me out of the workshop as well. <laughs> so this this running thing, have you always been a runner or did you just wake up one morning and decide, I want to run a marathon? I've, I've always ran probably for, well, on and off, 20 years probably. And then wow. um, Kids came along, I didn't run for maybe six or seven years, which is probably exactly the time when they should have been running. Yeah. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> it's, so, it's so good for the, I find it really good for the for the head, you know, just to get out and, and go for go for a, a, a long run. But yeah, the I always thought the marathon was too, too much. I couldn't do that, you know. Yeah. That sort of feeling, but it turns out you can't. <laughs> you know, you, just have, you know? I, I only ever did the um, couch to 5k and when I got to the 5k the, the sense of achievement was massive it must be absolutely huge after completing a marathon <laughs> yes, it, was, it was good it was a good yeah. night that night as well then. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't at my best when I finished but <laughs> <laughs> that's understandable yeah. Yeah. the, the um, I ran it for the kids' school. They were raising money for an all-weather sports pitch. And uh, so there was a lot of people there in you. And, and then I was picking up my youngest daughter from school the following Monday. And uh, they had sports day on or something. And Ada, she had won her race. And the teacher said, are you going to uh, you going to, you know, run a marathon like your daddy or something like that? And she goes, uh, yes. But I'm not going to vomit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant! So, yeah. That's to, how I was at the end. <laughs> to be fair, that that's not the worst that can happen. I I, I recently saw a clip of a marathon runner who's like, "Don't film me from behind." I just shot myself, and that was the only thing <laughs> she said before she went past and. <laughs> I remember that it was my 
<laughs> childhood sweetheart, her father, he just started running because he started to get a bit of a belly because he was a truck driver and did not move around much. He just started running for that reason. And within a few years, he com- competed in his uh, ultra challenges, uh, running, bicycling, whatnot. And uh, I-, I remember that training regime is like, nope. So it's like <laughs> training, 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 training. And then the week before he rested and he ate, I mean, a regular sized dinner. And then he had like the two liter box of ice cream with caramel sauce, peanuts, bananas, because he was bulking up for that week. And then he did that run. And his wife was always with him as a support personnel. And once he has finished whatever crazy race, he has not only physically, but also mentally just emptied everything so he couldn't find his way back uh, down a hill so she had to like get him into the car and he spent a week afterwards walking up and down stairs backwards because he couldn't go down the stairs in the regular because his feet were hurting so bad it's like this doesn't seem healthy <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure it is healthy at that. No. You know, you're, you're, no. when your body starts eating itself basically you know yeah, yeah. Why does it, all of these competitions have to be so goddamn long? You have to run until you die, or bike, like all to. Why can't it be reasonable length to all of this? Everything goes to extremes, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like Havar and padlocks. I mean, why can't it just be a normal padlock? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because where's the fun in that? <laughs> yeah, but at least he he could lift his. I mean, he could have made it so big that he couldn't carry it by himself. So that well, was... he, he will do after I've made one. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I agree, though. Why can't you have something competitive but also leisurely? I mean, competitive, competitive walking or something. <laughs> yeah, darts is one of those, but they banned drinking now, didn't they? That yeah. was boring. <laughs> so I mean, what's the point? <laughs> now it's lost the danger element. <laughs> I actually tried, and this was like on a company trip. I tried curling, and it's really funny because you have that one shoe for stabilizing, and then the other one for kicking on the ice, and you're just throwing rocks instead of bowling. And of course, you're pissed drunk from <laughs> you arrived the venue. So that that was real fun. I could get into that. I think. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I tried that as well. Got under the ice. I'm like, nope, this is not for me. <laughs> right? <laughs> I think I threw one stone and then I just, nope, uh, I'm off. I've never tried it, but a, a friend of mine, she, I think I mentioned it before on the podcast, actually, she went off to the championship earlier on this year or last year. And um, just spectating there, I think it was six or seven hours long of just yeah. watching curling all day. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. That should be an extreme sport, watching the curling championship. (laughs) Curling is one of those sports also that's better to watch on TV because you want to see it from all the angles and and, uh, from uh, from the top and that sort of thing. Because you're seeing it from one side, that's... And then they they move and they play the other direction and that sort of thing. And it's, yeah, it's not the same, I think. Could make it more fun if I was editing the championship. <laughs> <laughs> Put some fire in there and do the Mario Kart thing. And <laughs> bing, 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 and fart noises when everyone <laughs> <laughs> bent over. And yeah. Yeah, that, that's the thing, though. I mean, with AI now, you could probably have auto-generated effects live. So, I mean. <laughs> watching ice hockey i mean the the fighting is interesting but they are now using like uh, digital enhancement to show a trail where the puck is going because you can't really see it because it's so fast so uh, i mean if you could add some coins and some obstacles and uh yeah yeah a lot of sports could need some uh enhancement (laughs) speaking of ai enhancements i saw just the other day my son came to me with his phone and asked, why does Mark Rober speak Swedish? Because it was a short of a Mark Rober video about um, 
uh, making a standing wave of water from a speaker. And the video clip was voiced in Swedish. And you can hear it was Mark Rover's voice talking, but it was in Swedish. I, and that I saw was really weird. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it was he who actually had a video on that where he showed it because you now have it, it's like p- people, uh, you can get your voice uh, digitized. So there is this company where you get a random text generated. Uh, and the, te- the only purpose of that text is to get you to say all the different combinations of letters and words and sounds. And then it takes that and it breaks it down digitally. And then now they have merged that with AI as well. So you have a video clip and it just auto translate it and then it uses your voice to synthesize the sound of it and then it just tweaks the video so it it basically automatically edit your mouth to match that so you can basically have one video and just uh, generate this in mm-hmm. all the languages which is cool but also weird very very weird <laughs> yeah. so i'm gonna at one point, I'm going to stop making YouTube videos because I'm just going to watch my own in all the different languages. But it's, it's just a point before this comes <laughs> as an auto thing on new YouTube. And then uh, I'm going to sit there and watch myself uh, speak Finnish while I drink my gin and talk. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been tempted to make a YouTube video in your own language? Either one of you. It would be easier, I think. I mean, it wouldn't take like 10 takes to do the intro because you stumble over the word and trying to find the right words and and that sort of thing. Easy just to talk to the camera. But I think I would just rabble on as I usually do. So it's just for a, a, a smaller niche audience. So, yeah. <laughs> Glenn, I've noticed on your your videos you're putting yourself in front of the camera a lot more now. Is this a conscious thing, or are you? Um... No, so, sometimes I feel like doing it. Most of the time, I don't. I actually enjoy editing videos with mm-hmm. out me in them. To be honest with you, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also um, having a little bit of an internal rebellion against all the videos that do I like I do like talkie videos and I like it when they're saying what they're doing and whatnot. I'm starting to get a little bit annoyed by the silly stories that are going over the top that has to follow with a tiny little bit of making but then this story about whatever whatever life story or life lesson they're putting in there which I just see as unnecessary so I'm a little bit fed up of those so yeah. I'm trying to bring back <clears throat> non talkie videos <laughs> I'm not succeeding <laughs> Yeah, because I, I I I do actually quite like I like watching both, but I say that the whole story thing's just getting a bit much for me at the moment. Yeah. You ever thought you're going to uh, get on the old YouTube soon, Andy? No, no, <laughs> no. I, I especially when I'm trying to do a project, I just can't be arsed with the whole trying to yeah. set up a phone or a camera and all of this stuff. I just want to do it and have fun, you know. Yeah. Um, but I appreciate the people do do it because I get a lot of benefit from it as well. You know, in terms <laughs> of learning how to weave or whatever it is, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is quite handy. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't see me going down that route. No. Yeah. What made you go onto Instagram? Do you think and start sharing your projects? So, my wife it was her idea. She set it up and. In fact, for the first year, I think she was had to do all the posting because I didn't know why. <laughs> you know, it's like that's a bloody good deal. Yeah. Yeah. I can I can sympathise with that. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe too lazy to learn whatever way you want to look at it. You know, <laughs> but um, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't really do a lot of social media stuff. You know, yeah. So. But I've enjoyed Instagram and, and the community that, that's there. Yeah, so I think it's a nice place to be. Yeah, it's funny. I I had no I, I had no intention of going on Instagram. I, I set up the YouTube channel, and I think I'd only been on YouTube for a week or two. And Michelle said, 
you probably should have an Instagram account as well. So I don't, I don't think I want one. I don't know how to work it. I've never been on it. Yeah. I'll set, I'll set you one up. <laughs> yeah. And she, like, like you, she did, she did my posting for the first, probably first five, six reels I put out there. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was too scared to press anything in case mm. I just got it wrong. Uh, so. I know. And then you realise it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. You can yeah. <laughs> as soon as you find that delete button, you're all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing matters. All pretend. No, Just imaginary no. friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, what do you do for a day job, Andy? Um, so I we work. I work for a medical distribution company. So we um, we supply endoscopes mainly and patient monitoring equipment. So I've been there 25 years. So That's a long time. <laughs> yes, it's a long time. <laughs> and love it every day. <laughs> love it every day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've had about four different roles or maybe five. I've lost count now. So I've tried to move about to keep, keep, it, keep it good, you know, interesting. Yeah. Well, as long as you... Uh find it bearable i mean that's you have find something that you can be happy with uh you don't have to love your day job you just have no, to no no be able to endure it for a long time that's good enough exactly. yeah you just got to do the day jobs to uh enable you to do all the fun stuff out of work haven't you yeah absolutely yeah <laughs> it has to be done <laughs> You just have to remember to have enough free time to actually do the fun stuff and not just work, work, work all the time. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to get the balance the other way a little bit more, I think. <laughs> yeah, well, you had two and a half days off last week. That's true. I normally only work just over four days a week anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so do, I do most of the workshop time in the evenings and that's becoming... I'm running into a phase where I'm kind of, I'd like to sit down earlier and not, you know, have more rest in my life. Yeah. You know, um, so, yeah, it's just a phase. But once I get the chair finished, I'll probably not do anything for a couple of weeks, you know, just. Yeah, it must be hard. I mean, you have to sit in it for a couple of weeks. I mean, yeah. to enjoy it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sad he only has to sit in it long enough for a photograph. He doesn't have to prove anything. <laughs> well, all the photographs will be taken before I sit on it. Just in case. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I would probably sit on it for five minutes and I'm like, God damn it, it needs a foot rest. And then off to the workshop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Should the back be a little taller or lower? <clears throat> or should I have a, yeah. Well, that's the thing about a chair. Like, I've no idea. Is it going to be comfortable? Is that angle right? Is that height right? You know, it's... There's a lot of guesswork for me. There's no, been no, no computer simulations here. <laughs> it's good that you get to test it out on your daughter then, isn't it, before you make yourself one? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so did anybody take an, any advantage of the Black Friday deals? I haven't seen any, really. No? It's this oh. week that's the final stretch, isn't it? Yeah. The actual Black Week started today, yeah. I think. Oh, I'm so I'm already tired of it. <laughs> I mean, I, both yes and no. I'm gonna use. There is a couple of things I'm gonna get because it's on the the wish list uh, for the family. So I'm just gonna get some like Christmas presents and bought. Of course, the, the one tool company and they does this every year. Uh, all right. He always buys Bosch tools, so they're just sending me emails. And of course, uh, I think it was two nights ago. Uh, the miter saw I really want the the big bad boy, the one. It's it's not a battery powered one, uh, and I realized I don't need that for a miter saw. But yeah, it's the big blade, very beefy, bulky one with like uh, good tolerances and everything. And I like. It's 36% off. So it's like, instead of a thousand pounds, it's like 750 or something like that. And it's like, God damn it. 
they they knew <laughs> i mean i had a week vacation in rome last week and then i bought something else and i don't have the money for that why, why are you showing me <laughs> it's the, it's a deal of it's not gonna happen in a long time i think but no i don't have a budget for it so uh yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm gonna there. I'm gonna sit and cry with my 3D printer. It's like, why? Yeah. Normally, I would say buy it, but I think 750 no. quid on a mitre saw for a hobbyist is a little bit much. Yeah, yeah, yeah that too. I mean, the, the other <laughs> one is I have the Ryobi one, and it I think I used it three or four times last year, and it, it mm. I mean it. I basically use it for 45 degree angles, and those are spot on. <laughs> yeah. I haven't changed blades as I bought it 10 years ago and it still cuts. So yeah, <laughs> it's a waste of money in that respect. My mitre saw pretty much only comes out when I'm doing construction somewhere to take mm-hmm. out with me. I mean, I use a table saw for most things nowadays. Yeah. 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 You need a big construction project that you could actually use it for too. Then you can to, buy yeah, it. To justify that cost. <laughs> like a workshop. Yeah, but yeah. that's the thing, though. I mean, for construction work, you don't need that precision. I mean, you could just no. you could use an angle grinder with a big blade on it. It would be perfectly fine. <laughs> Eyeballing the angle, yeah, yeah, that would work. <laughs> yeah, I, I built my workshop using my hundred pound reconditioned Urbauer one, and it's still going strong. <laughs> it's definitely precise enough. But uh, I did take advantage of the Black Friday deals. Made a very big purchase. Walked into my local branch of Screw Fix on Friday, and there they were, fourteen hundred screws in a box, thirty pounds off. <laughs> See, I seen that. I was actually thinking about going for it. <laughs> Bloody good deal, actually. Down from fifty quid to twenty quid. Yeah, that's that's. You never bizarre. have to buy a screw again. I'm I'm set for a couple of years, Andy. I reckon. <laughs> Thing is that particular brand as well. I actually have the uh, plastic sorted box, which I bought probably last year, and a few of the compartments were running low, so I was going to have to buy some anyway. So, yeah, very happy with that purchase. Yeah. <laughs> I, should, I should have done the same. I A few years ago, uh, the local hardware store, they, they buy in bulk, of course. So you get all the small wooden screws, but with a, a hex head, and they are perfect, but now all the the tradies have realized this. So I mean, every time they get a new shipment in, they're waiting by the doors when they open and they go in and they just buy everything to fill up their their cars. So if if you're not there on the right day of the year, they're sold out. And I'm running a bit low now on on some dimensions, and it's like, God damn it, <laughs> they're always sold out. <laughs> So yeah, maybe I should just buy online in bulk. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll look into screws. Buy everything in bulk. That you Last need. Last Maker Central had a Black Friday offer. They were half price tickets. And oh yes, they did. I was checking there today. They're still full price. <laughs> yes, they did. I um, I paid full price for mine, and then they went on the Black Friday. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know. think Havar laughed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, me got, too. I and I, I didn't even. Very... Yeah, but I, I, did... I booked my hotel early and got a better deal than you. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And I didn't have to fly there. Yeah. Well, I bought my my uh, entry tickets full price, and I didn't even show it to anyone because I, I'm a, oh, I, course, I, yeah. I was counted as an uh, exhibitor, so I oh, didn't no. have to have a ticket. So I, I got the worst deal of us all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you worked the whole time? Yeah. <laughs> that too. <laughs> Are you planning on going in May, Andy? Yes. Planning yeah. on it. Yeah. Doing, doing the weekend again? Well, you have to, don't you, really? from <laughs> Coming from Ireland. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll probably do an extra night. Maybe Friday to Sunday morning. Yeah. Yeah. And you're in KJ, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, I just yeah. have to figure out, you know, Oh, how long I can be there and that sort of thing. Oh. Yeah. Well, if you want to come a day early and come and see me, you're more than welcome to. Yeah, that's it's probably the most logical thing to do. Yeah. And then figure out where to go and what airports to use and that sort of thing. And yeah, yeah. It's... they're all a couple of hours away from me. It doesn't make a difference. <laughs> yeah, but then you have to figure out. I mean, because it's it's not for some reason. 
if you just want to travel from Sweden to England and don't be be fussy about what airport to go to, the the progress I've used does don't understand. They more right. like, okay, you want to go to England, London it is. Yeah, and it's only <laughs> London Airport, <laughs> and you get three options of what kind of London you want to go to. Yeah. But, but oh, I mean, I, there are other places. I know it. When I was when I went to Norway, um, well, it was only this month, wasn't it? Um, the main thing for me was finding a direct flight. I didn't fancy the uh, yeah. transfers. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm after as well. Yeah, try mm-hmm. Stansted. They do Norway direct anyway. I don't know whether they do Sweden. Yeah, that, that's down as London as well, but that's still only a couple of hours away for me. It's the same thing, isn't it? Norway and Sweden. Oh, <laughs> like, like England and Ireland, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> practically the same. <laughs> well, Northern Ireland is. <laughs> Southern Ireland likes to pretend <laughs> there's been some upset over it in the past, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I think the the you could. If you say that uh, Norway, Norway and Ireland is the same and, and Sweden wishes that they were England and could bully the other countries more efficiently <laughs> than we have in the past. We tried to be England, but unfortunately uh, our version of Wales, that's Denmark, were too strong for us. So we just fought them back and forth the entire time instead of actually being the top dog all the time. That small country, Denmark, you struggled with. Yeah, but they they have a lot of pigs, and uh, I mean, <laughs> the, 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 the biggest I wasn't anim- expecting that. The biggest animal in Denmark is the pig. Uh, they are, <laughs> I mean, half of them are pig farmers, so it's a lot of uh, fatty meat, and they get really strong. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, and I mean, it's a, I mean, it's uh, it's really hard to to grow crops in Sweden. So we're. I was I was thinking, <laughs> was, wasn't it Napoleon or whoever brought elephants over the Alps, and then you have the Danish they brought Hannibal. their pigs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you think of a battalion of wild boars coming at you. It's it's terrifying. <laughs> you have to uh, make your uh, moose battalion run away. Uh. <laughs> okay. So Havar, you're going to uh, let us down next year, aren't you? You're not coming, are you? I'm, 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 I'm still on the fans, but most likely I won't. I mean, it's uh, the eldest birthday that weekend, and yeah, she yeah, uh, she enjoyed her, herself last time. But it's like, I don't want to go there next year. Just talking to those guys. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> but that being said, the year after we're going back because we went. I think on last Sunday of Maker Central, uh, we had some alone time, so we went off campus, so to speak. And they have this; uh, it's it's really crappy, really the the Bear Grylls Adventureland or or whatever. But they have an outdoor climbing facility, like uh, that one is really good. And she really wanted to go, but no, you have to be eight years. So that's the only thing. We're going back when I can climb there, and. You're not allowed to talk to those guys. So you're those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can't believe she doesn't want you to talk to us. I mean, it's you that's the bad influence, not us. <laughs> <laughs> well, she doesn't know that. <laughs> because I control the narrative. <laughs> <laughs> should, we, um, should we end the main episode there and do the half pint and I'll tell you about me going over to the dark side Ooh, exciting Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> all right then did this see have any time see you see bye. you bye, bye. bye. <laughs>